All right, evening. It's Jeff from RV Diagnostics. I don't know, 16th or 17th of August, 2023. So, we were working before. There's two other videos on how we troubleshot a relay slash solenoid. Because some of y'all call it solenoid, but it's what it does when you turn the key on, engine off on the Sprinter or any type of gasser or diesel. It activates this one, all right, right here, and this is self-grounding right here. So the positive goes here, and then it closes the switch between here and here, these two brass ones. That's why they're brass, okay? So this allows that house battery right back there to charge, right there. So that's the engine battery over there. So I had to disconnect that negative, that negative back there, and I still test with a multimeter. Even though I'm inside, right, there might be solar. Got a, you know, controller making DC voltage, and that's your lucky blow a fuse. You gotta go hunt it down because who knows where it is, right? There's some, each model's a little different. So, uh, here we go. Some of the basic tools you need to do this one. A 3.8, I use six point. That's to take this terminal lug off, the small one, all right? And then you need half inch wrench. I use 12 points because it's a little tight. And then I use a six point half inch. Make sure it's half, there you go, half inch or 13 millimeter. A half inch, 0.7 millimeter. And 13 millimeters, 0.3 of a millimeter. All right, some of y'all out there, oh my God, he told them wrong. You're not torquing down a head to an AGT 1500 turbine with 21 screws in them. All right, so we can get by with these tools, all right? All right, here we go. Let's put you on pause real quick and show you what I did. Get a flashlight. All right, so what I did was took off the half-inch cable, half-inch nut here on the brass contactor. Um... And here's this one, which fed the house connect disconnect relay solenoid, whatever you want to call it. And then this comes from the main engine for that battery over there, positive. So I needed a Phillips screwdriver, all right, to take that screw off right down there. I won't take it off, I'll loosen it. One I'm going to take off. That's your ground wire. Remember, I told you the casing of this is ground. Let's say you're in a jam, you can only get one that has two of them, two of these small ones. So one's positive, one will be negative. You take that, run a wire, let's say that's the negative one. There's two of these terminals right here, small ones. One goes to the signal wire, which is this guy. Remember, I went over it, that's the diode. Okay. And let's say this is the negative. You would take a little jumper, put it from here to there, and just ground it right there, right? To your negative of your battery there's plenty of grounds right there look right there see there's that ground so that would work usually white is ground and yellow is power in this case all right all right so we're going to loosen this up we got this one already loose now i thought i did it's a little bit tight but let me get it off all right so we got that group of wires off right there okay now for those that might have to like, okay, you get this out, you want to make sure you got the right one, you drive down, your buddy over in lot 222 can help you. So you want to take and zip tie these wires, tie them, tape them together so when you get back, go, oh, damn, I don't know what one goes where. Because there's what? One, two, three, four on there. This side had the two big ones, okay? Um, all right, so now I'm going to take a screwdriver to that Phillips. And unfortunately... I don't think there's a secure nut on the other side of this metal bracket here. I'm trying not to drop the nut. This one will probably be easier to get to than that one. So I just loosened that screw up there. And I'll try to take this one all the way off. All right. Hold on. We'll be right back. Now, you don't have to buy these type of screwdrivers. But you see how that has a hex drive on it? So you push harder here and then use a ratchet to help you turn that screwdriver. Make sure you've got the right number Phillips tip. Okay, right there. Number two, I think it's number two. Hold on. 
There it is. Number two. You ain't got to buy snap on. I just buy them because I use them every day and I don't want them to break on me. So let's get that screw off right there. All right. Like I told you, I got this screw out on this side, right? And they didn't put a, a Loctite nut in there. I probably could, but I'm not. I'm just going to fight a little bit. Put a wrench through here. Hold that nut that just fell down right there. Hold on. We got a couple. There we go. That one. I don't know why they didn't put a forever nut in there. Right? But they didn't. That's part of life. All right, so now... We're going to take this signal. Remember, this is a diode. We're going to go over how to check that. That stops this coil from creating more 90 volts DC spike and messing up computers and stuff. Okay, so they even got it crimped together. It's a power and a ground together. It's because the diode allows voltage to flow one way only. It's a tank circuit. That's the professional name for it. All right, so I'm going to get that off. That's at 3.8. Hold on. There you go. There, I have my big old thumb on it. All right, so there you go. We got her hooked up to the new one. We got to put a nut on here. All right. I had to hurry up and do the thing. I haven't learned how to untime the camera. For some reason, it'll go off after five or ten minutes. But here you go. I just did that to keep it going. I'm going to put you on hold and get back to mounting this thing. All right, so found a quicker, faster one. There's two screws that hold it. This whole bracket relay is something. Be careful when you put it back so you don't pinch no wires. All right? There's your, here's your studs. They go on there so we can go from the back. We can hold the, there's two nuts right there, that one and that one. All right, that's with the Phillips. That mounts, mounts that solenoid slash relay. I'm going to screw that tight now. I'll be right back. All right, I know a lot of you, when you're doing the double nuts, you don't do this, and sometimes you create problems, okay? I'll show you what I'm talking about. You take a thin wrench, or just grind one down or go to Harbor Freight and buy cheap stuff. Those are snap-ons, of course. That's what I do for a living, right? All right, you see it? So I'm going to hold that nut while locking down that one, okay? I'm going to do it on both. What I'm, what I'm talking about is right here. You're holding this nut. See, it's already got a a washer on it that's locked down. See it right there to split. That's why we call it a split washer. So this is tight, but you can by tight once you put the connectors on the ends and you tighten this nut down out here, you can spin this and mess up the inside, folks. Okay. So I wouldn't want you to do that. So just hold that and then tighten that one. I'll do the same over here. All right, this is mounted again, All right? They're tight. That's the ground wire right there with the diode in it. All right, I'm sorry. Right here's the ground wire. Power and ground wire together. You go, oh my God, short the ground. No, it has a diode. It's a tank circuit. We talked about that, I think, in video two. All right, so I'm going to get this thing together. That's pretty much what it takes to mount them couple different tools I went over those for you uh, sometimes when you get the other relay solenoid the nut sizes are different uh, sometimes they're metric sometimes they're standard sometimes they're standard but bigger or smaller believe it or not sometimes they're metric bigger and smaller so wish you luck out there this is what we did we did a, uh, a we would call it a boost solenoid technically but you can on this one, as soon as I turn the ignition on, it activates that. That's why it's called continuous duty. And it allows the alternator to charge the house batteries. Remember, we had over a volt drop on it. Uh, one time we had three or four, and then eventually it, it went away to about two-ish. And I think we got down to one. But that's because the batteries weren't pulling as much, the house batteries. The more amps you pull, the more voltage drops it cost resistance electrical resistance maybe for fun I'll tear that contactor up right here and we'll see what's going on all right yeah, this is Jeff from RV Diagnostics putting in a continuous duty relay solenoid thank you and what's it do 
You can make it charge from the house battery to the engine battery with a switch on that single terminal small one. Um, or you can drive down a road, feed it alternator from your battery, and it'll charge the house battery. So you can go, you can do this yourself, but this one came that way. It's an Itasca on a 3500 Dodge Sprinter chassis or whatever you want to call it, diesel. There's another one I got in here. Two out of here. Uh, Thursday would be nice, it really would, because I got some more Class A's back here today. Thank you, Jeff from RV Diagnostics.